All right, guys, so I finally got one, um, a uh, Cadillac North Star 4.6 liter 32 valve. This bad boy right here. Uh, I got to do a starter on it. The starter is located under the intake manifold. This is one in a V. Uh, you've seen the meme. I don't know if the meme is correct. We're going to find out. So uh, first things first, I'm going to have to get that top cover off that says North, North Star 32 valve. And then I got to disconnect that top wire from there. The top wire that splits off into two here goes under the intake to the starter. And you can see it right there. And so, it looks like somebody's actually been in here at some point. Uh, and the other end goes down to the alternator. Um, the alternators are worse, I believe, than the starters. Like I said, I've actually never done a starter. This is going to be the first one I've ever done. Uh, the alternators are not fun. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect that top wire. That bottom wire, that's the one from the battery itself. So I'm going to disconnect the top one, and this way I have no power going to the starter. And what I'm going to do actually is hook a battery charger up to it while it's sitting here. This way I charge the battery uh, while I'm doing the job. All right, so the cover's off. The battery charger's hooked up. That line is disconnected. So now i got to disconnect these... Um, Vapor, not vapor lines, these uh, steam lines. They're coolant lines, but I refer to them as steam lines. So they're at the top of this system. Uh, let's see, they go over here to these two hoses, over there to those two hoses. They're going to come off. Then I got to take the fuel rail lines out, those two right there. I guess they bolt down yeah, to the side right in there. So I got to take all of that off. Uh, let's see, I got to take that little. It's not a PCV, it's like a breather nipple or whatever that is. I gotta take that off. The PCV's on that side, I gotta take that off. So let's go there. All right, so the fuel lines are disconnected over there. The bracket's unbolted. The connectors are all off, as you see there. I started to take the front bolts out. Then I realized I'm gonna have to take the rail. I was hoping to leave the rail in the manifold, but I'm gonna have to take the rail out. And if you look in the back, it's just, it's too much of a nightmare to get to the bolts. So. I'm going to take the rail out and what I did is I took compressed air and I blew right around the injectors and I blow right around the, where the manifold actually meets the heads. So, and then I took uh, WD-40 and I sprayed each of the injectors to try to get some lube on them. So now I'm going to take the bolted studs or bolt studs, whatever you want to call those things, out and then hopefully the rail will come right out. All right, so as you see, I got all the injectors out. They came right out. You know, there was really no big deal to it. Um, and I got all the bolts out now. So now I'm going to lift the intake out. Oh, there's uh, the intake is held in place by a boot with a clamp on it. So it starts to lift. So uh, again, I'm going to have to put the phone down and I'll film it again once it's out. All right, so one thing I'm noticing when I'm trying to lift this thing up, if you look down, Past that hose, actually straight down there, Oops. you can see, you see that fitting or whatever that is, right there, that hits the bracket right here when trying to come up. So now I gotta figure that out. All right, so I got the intake off. And I realized my stupidity, the boot that goes between the intake, right here, you take that off with the intake, you don't leave it inside there. I gotta clean this up, it's looking a little grody. Um, but yeah, you don't take the clamp off, you take the three bolts out that go through the throttle body. There's one of them right there. Um, you take the three bolts out and then the whole thing just lifts up and out, really not that big a deal. Uh, so I'm at the starter now. And in all honesty, I think that took me a grand total, even with filming, less than a half hour. I mean, it really, really wasn't bad so far. So now I'm going to change out the starter. All right, so it's completely out. There's the new one. I bought a Delco. Uh, could not get a brand new one because something like this, uh, I, I start, especially lately, starters have been terrible. So I got a Delco. Uh, and I'm hoping, you know, paying for the extra money for a Delco uh, is worth it. And I tell you what, the quality compared to a lot of remands is right on point. It, this thing uh, looks and feels and 
like the quality of the build, everything looks really good. So now I'm going to start putting this thing back together. Well, let's see how that goes. All right, so the starter is in, bolted up, wiring's hooked up, everything's tight, everything's where it's supposed to be, nothing's touching. Uh, I cleaned off the gasket surfaces. I cleaned off where the throttle body, uh, the back of the throttle body plate is. And that's kind of a weird setup. That's like a whole manifold looking thing. Anyway, regardless. So I got new gaskets in the intake and I cleaned off that rubber gasket there. I used like a wire brush to clean that. Now, whenever you have an intake off like this, where it has those rubber O-ring gaskets, just replace them. Uh, you're asking for trouble if you don't. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen it where they wind up uh, creating a vacuum leak and you're going to be chasing a vacuum leak. Like, Why the heck do I got a vacuum leak? Well, because you didn't change them. What happens, they flatten out over time or they split or whatever. Just replace them. It's just cheap insurance. What are you going to spend, 20, 30 bucks? Just change them. All right, so here we go. Now the intake is back on and it's bolted down and I got the uh, that boot flange plate thingy bolted back up. So now I'm going to put the injectors back in place. <clears throat> what you want to do on injectors, uh, as you can see here, the transmission assembly lube that I've shown you in other videos that I use on O-rings, it works excellent on injectors to get them uh, lubed up to fit back into their respective holes. Um, if you try to just push them in, uh, a lot of times you, just, you could be fighting with those things. That transmission assembly gel works beautifully. It works absolutely excellent. So I highly recommend doing that. All right, so she's all back together now. And let me just show you. There it is. The intake's on. Everything's pretty much back where it needs to be. And now I got, yeah, I got the battery uh, or the cable for the starter and the alternator hooked back up. Airbox is back on. And... Yeah, everything's tight. So, let's go see if she starts. I'll grab my side here. And let's reach in. All right, we got all our lights. And there we go. Okay, got a check engine light on, an airbag light on. Service airbag message. Fuel level low. All right, well, that's about it. So that's good. The car is running. I could just put that top engine cover back on. It's only two bolts. Um, well, I guess that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, if you like my videos, just if you could please hit the like button. If you could please subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. It would really help me out. Uh, it helped me make more videos. So uh, that's about it. Again, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and keep wrenching.